Next, we consider the computation of the attractivity map. Therefore, please open the C sharp attractivity component, the C sharp code. And the first part, um, that's titled for testing, that's something we can ignore. And we start from compute attractivity landscape or map in our case. We start with a few variables. So the number of locations in our grid city means the number of grid cells or blocks that we have. So here you see um, we use the distance tree. That's this tree that we created in our C sharp distance component that I've explained to you in the last lesson. And the bot branch count gives us the number of branches or the number of lines in this illustration that my tree has. And the number of distances, that's the number of entries in the list in this dot of my visual representation here, um, which I can call by distances dot branch. And I take just the first one and ask how many entries I have in this list, which should be the same as the number of locations because I've computed from every point to every other point the distance, including the point itself, which is then zero. And then I uh, define a maximum distance value um, that I take just for the uh, normalization later. Here um, I declare a set of uh, two, two lists um, where I store the values for the attractivity for population and the attractivity values for workplaces in my grid city. So here I will have the same sequence as I have used it for the grid cells for the points and store the values of the attractivity of each um, cell. And max and max population and max work places that's the maximum values that I have stored in my um, population list. So of the current population, you can see um, I read here in each, each iteration the population distribution and the workplace distribution. And these um, values just stores the maximum values. Then the main part, and that's also for your own experiments and your own explorations, that's um, in this nested loop. That's the rule how I compute the attractivity of a location. And this is really the, the key driver for the development of the, the growth process of the city. So let's look into it, how it works. What I do here, I compute the current population value in the inner loop. That's a fraction of the value that I have, so how many people I have in a certain location divided by the maximum value of the population means that's the relationship um, of the current cell to the whole population, which fraction I find in my cell. And the same I do for the current workplaces. So this means um, I'm with this current population and current work variable, I'm always between zero and one because it's the fraction here. Then I compute um, the relationship of the current distance that I consider from a certain cell to another cell, which is also a relation to the maximum distance in my system. And the maximum distance, that's what I know, it's from this cell to the other cell on the other hand side. That's the maximum Manhattan distance that I can have in my system. That's why we computed the max distance in this way that I just took this value from my branch, which is the last entry. Okay, so now we have the maximum distance as well. And what I do now, um, I compute the current perception of um, people who want to move into the city for a certain location. And therefore, I have to decide um, how I perceive density, if I perceive it positive or negative, for example. 
Um, in this case, this formula uh, perceives density in a positive way, means where um, a lot of people live in my city, that's a place that I consider as positive or new people will move to areas where I have more people already um, living. And you see, this is the core formula for computing this um, attractivity value. We can also visualize what happens. Um, here you see the attractivity for population. That's my output value. And if I link this to my visualization component, the input here, then I can see the attractivity map, which is in the beginning, in the first step, very simple. Here um, I have my first inhabitant of the city and the directly neighboring cells are relatively attractive and the blue cells are not attractive at all. And that's the result from this formula. Um, just to illustrate how this formula works, I've used this plotter the, um, as described in the lesson before. You can always uh, visualize the mathematical formulas that I use in my scripts by um, using, for example, this math plotter. So here you see the one minus x um, in the power to seven. That's exactly what I've written here, just in a different syntax. Um, one minus current distance, that's my x value. You remember this value is always between zero and one, means one minus this value is also always between zero and one. That's the scale that I have here between zero and one. And then the power to seven, and what I have, I have an exponential decreasing function. So this curve um, decreases from one, where it's the, out, uh, if x is zero, then the output one is the maximum value. And the higher my variable, the bigger my variable is, the smaller the outcome of the function is. What does it mean? This means um, the higher the distance from a certain cell with, for example, a high population value, um, the higher the distance, the smaller the attractivity, because I defined that people like to be close to other people. So the attractivity um, goes down if I'm far away from other people. That's expressed by this function. And you can also see the effect of this value here if I put it to two. And then you see it's just changing the um, steepness or the, the course of this curve. You can also see the effect if I visualize this in my plotter. If I change it to two, you see the, the corresponding effect in my map to having this different curve is that um, locations farther away become more attractive because the attractivity value is just higher as you can see it here. If I have values that are farther away from uh, the existing or from a cell with a high potential uh, with, with many people, then it's still attractive for me. So I'm not that critical in terms of distance. But if I increase it again to seven, run it again, then it shrinks to a more specific neighborhood. Um, what you see in the next line of code is that I cut the values at the, um, the input value or the output distance perception point four. <coughs> if we open the diagram again, you can see that I just cut the outcomes to seven at the outcome of 0 0.4. So everything that's below this value is just set to zero. So my curve goes from here to there and then it jumps to zero. If I deactivate this line of code, you can see what how it would look like if I would use the whole curve, then you see I have a more um, smooth gradient. And if I would be, uh, let's say three, then you see it's just bigger in the same way as we've seen it in before. And it uh, is the smooth um, gradient to this blue cells. And at the moment when I cut it, 
you have a hard edge of the attractivity landscape or of the attractive cells. So this has a huge effect on the development of my or how my simulation will distribute people. This is what we will see in the next component, how we really place people. Here we just consider the computation of the attractivity map. And you see the same thing I do for the workplaces and it has the same function. Um, workplaces want to be close to population because they need the work power so they don't want to be far away and you also can visualize the work place attractivity map just by linking the uh, output value from this component to the visualization input. You see that's um, as, as it is powered to and checking it with my gradient and the visualization of the plotter that's the same what we've seen in before is more um, or that the curve is not that steep um, decreasing so we have this more smooth transition over the whole grid city so means workplaces also accept to be relatively far away so it's still acceptable for them as long as they have somehow access to people in a certain distance and um, what we do in the next step is that we summarize the attractivities um, that I find in every cell if I consider for example this cell and let's go back to the population visualization then that's better to understand okay for example I consider this orange cell and now I sum up all the attractivity values for the cell um, that I find in the neighborhood respectively in the whole city depending on the distance. So this cell is the result of the sum of all attractiveness values of the other cities and that's the visualization of the final outcome. So this cell has the highest value because I have only one person living in the city. So this is the closest cell with the highest attractivity and these are the directly neighboring cells. They are still attractive because they are not far away from it and all the others they are too far away to be bigger than 0.4 where I just cut my values from this line here. Okay and this um, they just summarize everything for one cell and then I put it in the attractivity population list. The sum of all the attractiv attractiveness values that I've computed and that's then the attractivity of one cell respectively in the list I store all attractive values, attractivity values for the individual cells in the same sequence as I have stored the grid cells in my list respectively the points and the distance values and the attractiveness values for population and workplace they always have the same order that's why I just can use them um, with compare or I, I don't need to do anything more than storing the values in the same order then I've stored the point so I always know which value belongs to which grid cell. And the final step that's um, just something that you need to know that it happens and um, that's the normalization of the values the attractivity values in my list. Um, what happens here is basically I scale the values in my list, for example, the attractivity of the population for population, that the smallest value in the list becomes zero and the biggest value in the list becomes one. So that's the normalization between in the range of between zero and one. I do this for both my lists and that's just to ensure that I have the same scaling of the output in each iteration. And with this, that's it. I've computed my attractiveness attractivity values. And if I run the simulation, for example, for 25 iterations, then you can observe how the attractiveness map is changing. So here you see um, more and more people come into the city, but they all will um, be located around my core the seed cell because they like to be close to others so they will not settle down somewhere at the edge that's why it grows in this very centralized way 
you can start playing around with different assumptions. For example, if you change the logic that people want to be close to other people to its opposite, I prepared this for you that you just need to activate respectively deactivate lines in your code. And um, where do we find it? Restrictive people like to be close to other people. That's what I commented here. And you can just change it because here I've added it. Here people don't like to be close to other people. That's this line of code. And you see the difference is that I subtract this distance perception value from one means I just reverse um, the attractivity so that places that are far away from everything becomes more attractive and places that are close to others becomes less attractive. And if you look at the attractivity map now, what happens, it just inverses it that what was red in before becomes now, uh, what was blue in before becomes now red means very attractive. And if we would run the simulation once again, you would see that the people will not cluster in one place, but they distribute over the whole landscape so that this attractivity map is changing all the time because people always try to be far away from each others, but then somehow other places becomes more attractive. And usually the corners are the most attractive places because they are farthest away from everything else. So most people will be located here until it somehow levels out the effect of the distance to other places. And we can switch to the other visualization. So that's the attractivity map. And if you want to see how the population is distributed, you just need to link the output of the population. And you see again, this is very um, diffuse. So we don't have one cluster anymore. We have a very heterogeneous um, distribution of people. That's the effect of um, the control mechanism that I said, okay, I want to have a distribution where people don't allow uh, the rule that people don't like each others. If I change it back, just to illustrate the different outcome that people like each others and we run it again and run the simulation just for 25 iterations to illustrate the basic difference. So here people will cluster around the core. And now you can play around with this basic simulation. So you can introduce different functions. You can introduce different attractivity maps and play around um, also with the dependency of the workplaces because that's at the moment also very straightforward, not very complicated. Workplaces just want to be close to other people. But we could, for example, add the effect that people may be and may consider workplaces as well. So you can extend the script that they want to be, for example, close to workplaces so they don't have to travel that long to go to work or they want to be far away because this may be factories with a lot of emissions. So they want to live somewhere else. These things you can implement into the model and observe the outcome if you run it. That's the basic idea of this very, very basic model that you have a tool at hand to test different logics for the development of your model. You can also add additional land uses, of course, so um, services or natural resources, um, attractive um, recreation areas, and so on and so on. Um, <coughs> so that's really the core of the simulation model, the computation of the attractivity maps for each land use and the interchange that you may include here. In the next step, we will look into the mechanism how we distribute the people. Um, but this is more or less always the same. You will concentrate on your explorations in this, on this component. That's why I try to explain this in more detail. In the next step, we will see how the distribution works.